Congratulations uh, on the new role. Uh, let's just get your views on what we're seeing in terms of the A shares. How much more upside do you expect to see uh, in Chinese mainland equities at this stage? Um, first of all, I, it would be very difficult for me to comment about uh, how far the Asia can go. But I can comment about what we uh, believe. This is a booming market, you know, and whenever you talk about China, you, you have to give a bit of the perspective of the history. You have to understand the Chinese are in the middle of changing their economy from a export oriented into a domestic consumer one. And for that, the Chinese has started the financial institutional reform in order to spread the financial resources into the into every sector of the of the society which is a very important one for them to do and central to that will be the bond market the bond connect and also the stock connect because these will represent the new sources of the financial uh, resources injected into the economy and it will help them in spreading out evenly the financial resources so if you are asking me whether the how 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 the market will fare, I can give you uh, some very simple um, numbers. That is, the foreigners holds about 1.5 trillion of the domestic uh, equity market, and then the holds about 1.8 trillion. And if if you go by the pace of which that. Uh, if we are taking the consideration about 10 to 15 percent of the bond market in the next few years, then we are talking about 13 trillion. And if you are talking about up to 20 percent, which is very common among other Asian countries, right. we are talking about 11 trillion. While at the same time, we're still at the very low level. So uh, you can see the, the so you can see the you can see the the pace. Mm. No, absolutely, uh, Shiji. Um, that, and then, good analysis there. In, 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 just in terms of what it means, in terms of business opportunities uh, for BNP Paribas, I know you have a 15% stake in Bank of Nanjing. Are you looking to increase that stake, and are you looking to increase and get full ownership, at least majority ownership, of a securities business in China? Uh, for us, we are looking at the... I, I, it would be very difficult for me uh, to comment about... Uh, the thing, the things that happen on the uh, for the bank as a whole. But as far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, uh, we see the Chinese market as the big one for the investment because when you look at the when you look at the order changes in the Chinese market, uh, most of the foreign players are very busy in building the infrastructure. This means that they have to build the infrastructure in the joint joint venture security company, they might be looking at the future company, they might be looking at the, the wealth management company. So mm. we are here trying to build a whole ecosystem in order to receive the incoming of the foreign players. And eventually, if you look at the foreign players in China, if we are going to take the industrial multinational company as a benchmark, they, they, they first came in to do the exporting and then they stay as a domestic player. So for us, mm. we, I think I can speak for the industry, we are all looking at building the whole e ecosystem in order to better maximize our ability in China. So CG, this is David in Hong Kong. So do I take it that you haven't applied to increase that stake? Uh, it's something we are looking into. Uh, okay. I, I can't really comment on that one yet. Sure, no problem. Now, uh, the broader view, based on what you were saying there as well, it seems as if there is a lot of opportunity within the brokerage space, within the sort of securities business as well. Your current presence there, because you pulled out of that JV back in 2007, uh, is still in the traditional banking space. Do I take it then that you are looking at a presence in the Zhengquan, in the securities industry in China? Uh, the, the better way to put it forward is we are looking to build an ecosystem, if possible, that we will be taking in the consideration that the foreigners will become a credible force in the Chinese equity market and the bond market. And this is important because for the banking mm. side, for that many years, the foreign banks only account a very small percentage of the domestic market. But with the new mm. opening up, we are pretty much anticipating the, the foreigners will be a lot more relevant because the 15% of the 
bond market, the 20% or 10% of the equity market, which would be far exceeding what the foreigners have, the percentage in the domestic capital market, will, be, will represent a, a, a very important opportunity for us. And CJ, you mentioned about this potential wall of money that is coming into China, whether it is mm. the MSCI boosting A shares, uh, whether it's Chinese bonds included into the Bloomberg Barclays Index. How are you preparing for these changes? Have you added more staff? And, mm. and how much due diligence is really required here in light of these developments? Um, as a matter of fact, you know, I can comment on the bond side because, you know, this is specifically on the banking side. We actually have been preparing that for the last couple of years. We have acquired all the license. We are a settlement agent and uh, we, are, we are a custodian and settlement agent for that part. And we are, we are very heavily involved in the Bond Connect. And then we are also getting the license on the Panda Bond, which is also another part to help the market. So we have been preparing that uh, because one of the things is in China is you always have to prepare a little bit ahead of the time. We have, have been uh, anticipating this change. So we have been preparing for the last three to four years um, in, for, the, for the incoming. And we are very, very optimistic and very uh, keen on developing that part of the business. What are your views, CG, uh, on where we stand in terms of these trade negotiations? And do you expect China to make any additional concessions? Can they accept an enforcement regime that the U.S. is demanding? Uh, it, it, was, it will be a very difficult uh, subject for me to comment. But the only thing I, I would like to say is I think every one of us hope this thing can be resolved as, as, uh, as, as fast as it assumed in a, in, a, in, a, in a good way because people need to remember China has been representing about half of the, the world's growth in the, in the last that many years. Even with the Chinese economy slowing down, it's still one third. It is to everyone's benefits that they resolve this uh, as soon as they can in a, in a constructive way. Uh, what do you think are, are still the main concessions, though, from, from both sides, CG, in order for us to actually get a real deal? What would that actually look like to you? I, 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 I you know, it's a, it's, a very, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very difficult subject to comment, but I do see uh, in, on my side that the Chinese are, are trying to improve their domestic market. When you look at it, when, what they have been trying to do in a two session, they are trying to improve their domestic market so that it can be a lot more sustainable. When you look at the, 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 the reform on the, on, the, on the financial supply side, financial institutional reform, and when you look at it, the, they are trying to bring in more and more financial flow to replace the old uh, uh, merchandise trade surplus they used to enjoy when you look at it, that they have been talking about the, some fine tune on the domestic system, they are talking about improving the capital market. I think this is something the Chinese are doing uh, in order to improve themselves. I think this is probably the strategy they are trying to do and, and, and try, to, try to fortify their domestic economy. And this is important uh, given the uncertainty in the market. Mm. And a player like BNPCG, I would imagine, would be a big part of that that sort of solution. Uh, yeah, we, we talk about how Beijing has basically asked its banks to start lending to the private sector, but as you mentioned, longer term it has to be the bond market. How does that shift from lending into the capital markets, and you can talk to this because you're an expert here, how does that change the breakdown of bank revenues moving forward? Um, as a matter of fact, uh, for the for the for the for the bond side, I think that Beijing will be looking at two two reform. One is the interest rate reform, the mechanism of which to better transmit the the change of the interest rate into the real economy. The other is yes, indeed, like you said, it will be the bond. In the bond, I think the most important part is actually introduce foreign investor into the market. Because the foreign investor will bring in, what will the foreign investor will bring in the market is the international practice. And we will, we will be able, because if we are going beyond certain percentage of the market, we are much more relevant 
in talking about the diversify of the investor base that is important and also about the instrument that will be required in order to sustain the long-term investment in the Chinese bond market, which are all very important. And I think the Chinese are aware of that. And the other thing is, when you think about the foreigners coming into Chinese market, most of which are either for the hedging of their reserve or they are the long-term money investor. These are the things that can, that can greatly improve the Chinese bond market. And this is important. Uh, CG, CG, what's your assessment of some of the measures that have been outlined at the National People's Congress around cuts to taxes and fees? We've heard from SMP Global Ratings in the last few days saying that maybe the tax cuts won't be as deep as the headline numbers suggest. What is your reading of what we've heard? Um, I think, I think um, our, our bank is of the view that the tax cut will be the key instruments they will be using. We need to go back a little bit on the background. This year, we are seeing that the Chinese will be very careful not to lose the monetary supplies too loosely because that may trigger a bit of the housing. So they are focused on the physical, uh, meaning they are, they, are, they are reducing the tax so they can preserve the long-term cash flow of the everyday people so that they can maintain the level of the consumption. It's a slightly long-term road, but I think the Chinese has come around that they decided that the, the, instead of using massive the fixed investment as in the past, they are going for a long-term approach. So we think, BNP, so we think the tax is, mm, sorry. Carry on, carry on CG, please. So we think the, it, it might be surprising for people to see the extent of the tax cut this year. Uh, CG, then, I, I have to wonder, I mean, they're setting a lower growth target here. It seems like economically, to a certain extent politically, the environment in China is getting a little bit more unpredictable. To what extent does that make China less of a place mm. for investors? Uh, it is still, you know, when you look at the people coming in, you know, people are still looking for the value. So if you look at the, the yield, it, again, this is the second largest economy and very, very, uh, very, very smallly tapped by the foreign investors. There's still a lot of value, both in the bond market and, the, in, and in the equity market. If you look at the absolute yield, if, if you look at the, uh, the, the, the pricing of the equity. So I think the people will continue to come in. but. At the end of the day, this is a part of the global markets that you cannot ignore. This is so important for people. So I, I, I think we are only at the beginning. You're still going to see some coming in. And then this mm -hmm. will be very much about the domestic side, which is very important for the Chinese in going forward. 